We just got Bash in Berlin, where Rhea Ripley finally got her hands on Dominic Mysterio, a classic between Randy Orton and Gunther, Kevin Owens pushing out, and a strap match that was actually good. Wait a minute. Is that a WWE New Day Unicorn from WWEShop.com? Or are you simply happy to see me? Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. So, another international WWE pay-per-view. And once again, the crowd puts American crowds to shame. And was I the only one who thought that at certain points they chanted all elite wrestling? Uh, they actually chanted something in German? But I really got confused for a second. I do feel kind of shitty that I didn't go to this event because it's happening in Europe. So, I definitely did have the opportunity. I would have seen Randy, man. Randy in the main event of a pay-per-view. Speaking of which, I really enjoyed watching this pay-per-view for a couple of reasons. First of all, the wrestling was really, really good. But that was expected. You know, I, I try not to lose the side of a wrestling fan in me. Sure, I'm a content creator. I'm a mark. We all are. If you're watching this video, most definitely, you're a mark. And be proud of that. We love professional wrestling. But I was watching this match and at certain points I was like, you know, I feel like a casual. And I love that. I want to see Randy Orton winning even though it doesn't make any sense. He shouldn't win. It should be Gunter. He's the future. But at certain points of the match I was like, I, I just want to be a casual fan. Randy's my favorite of all time. I started watching because of Randy Orton. I'm a root for Randy. I'm not gonna lie, I actually like this feeling of just feeling like a casual wrestling fan. You know, just turning on that dumbass switch and uh, wrestling is cool. So people, let's talk about Bash in Berlin. People, make sure to like this video, subscribe if you already didn't. As you guys know, guaranteed Coco Jumbo gains Schmeckle to the moon. Now, I could cream over this pay-per-view and basically tell you how great every single match was, which is true, but that's not why you click the video, so obviously... I'll try to nitpick it, because obviously, it can't be perfect. And I want to start with the first match of the night, which was Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens. Now, I like this. This was a classic. Like, every single Cody Rhodes title defense so far has been absolutely amazing when it comes to in-ring competition. The problem with this match was, and I was watching this match with casual wrestling fans, even they weren't that excited about it because of how predictable it is. Now, obviously, everybody understands that's how it should be. Obviously, we're building Cody as a champion, but I guess we gotta understand that until we get SummerSlam, WrestleMania, or a credible, really credible Cody opponent, it's gonna feel that way. And all we gotta expect out of these matches is good wrestling, cool-ass moves, and that's exactly what we got in this match. Now, not to say that the storytelling wasn't good. Kevin Owens had the opportunity to take advantage of Cody's injury, but he didn't because he proved he's a changed Man, eventually, that's how Cody Rhodes retained the WWE Championship, and you can interpret that story many ways, but either Kevin Owens regrets his decision, maybe he doesn't like the man he's becoming, or simply hates the fact that he's a changed man, but it's not working in his favor. And I honestly didn't expect a heel turn. I did not, I don't, I'm not even sure if we're going to get a heel turn out of this rivalry. And I'm not even sure if I want that. You could say, well, he could win a championship as a heel. Not really. Not currently with what's going on in the WWE. So, you know, I'm just nitpicking. I'm just basically critiquing stuff that is almost unavoidable. This match was going to be predictable. And, and it was. The second match was the women's WWE Tag Team championship match now the quality of the match was great again i, I absolutely love the crowd the crowd was like 50 percent of some of these matches they make you care and that's the magic of these people not being spoiled with uh, wwe events every goddamn week right so i believe this match was fun it had a lot of cool moments now i didn't make a predictions video i'm kind of glad i didn't but i'm gonna confess i'm gonna confess my sins boy I'ma confess my sins right here. I predicted a lot of the matches wrong. I predicted this one wrong. I felt like... Okay. So, yes. We got new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. And I'm wondering why. Because... The championships don't need them anymore, they certainly don't need the championships. And I've heard people saying that them being paired together, Jade and Bianca, kinda takes away from the dream match in the first place. I'm not sure if I agree, but I see that point. Maybe them being on separate brands and eventually meeting before WrestleMania, man, maybe that's how you could make it even special. On the other hand, this one is going to be a bit more personal because eventually one of them is going to turn. Uh, I'm not sure if they needed those championships, though. Sure, they're more credible champions because they're stars. I don't think that was necessary. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm wrong right here. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre in his trap match. Honestly, <laughs> not a lot of competition, but possibly the best trap match in the WWE, or at least in the past 20 years or whatever. And that's because this trap wasn't even the focal point. We were watching this for a story, and it just so happens to be they had a weapon to use. We got blood in this match, which is great, probably intentional, but CM Punk. I would like to imagine he fought hard for this, you know? <laughs> the quality of the match was great, possibly the match of the night, I would say. And I'm glad I was watching this match, and I forgot that CM Punk had all these injuries. Brother, it felt like watching CM Punk in 2011 again. I gotta be honest, I didn't feel like he missed a step, which is great. And of course, Drew McIntyre, just unbelievable. The finish of the match was also really good. It honestly felt like the end of the rivalry, even though we know it's not. A lot of GTSs, he taps every corner, GTS, and before banging the final corner, he takes the bracelet wins the match, really felt like the end of the rivalry, but again, it is not. Now, <sighs> wrestling fans, and that's just AEW fans, because obviously it's CM Punk, we hate Punk, right? Oh, it's about a bracelet. Why you care about- It's 50 cents! People kinda misunderstand this shit. Maybe, maybe, okay, maybe WWE are putting way too much focus on the bracelet, but it's what it represents. And to CM Punk it represents, well, it has his wife's name on it, his dog's name on it, and his ego is hurt. Drew McIntyre took that, not only took that, but he bragged about that shit every single week, tried to get into CM Punk's head, and now it's just symbolic. It's like, sure, I'm gonna beat your ass, I'm gonna win the match, and by the way, you ain't gonna brag about that shit anymore because I take that away from you. What's gonna be interesting now is watching how Drew McIntyre is going to respond, because surely he will. Bad blood, hell in a cell, it's happening, can't wait. Punk, Punk was great. Uh, re really happy that, you know, we're not leaving this paper with thinking, well, he's a good promo, but unfortunately, he can't keep up. Phil is getting old. I'm so happy that these are not the emotions we're feeling right now. One of the best mixed tag team matches I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Damien Priest and Rhea Ripley versus Dominic and Liv Morgan. This match was exactly what it needed to be. Just tons of fun working the crowd, obviously Judgment Day interfering, and most importantly, if I made that predictions video, I would have said that the only thing I want out of this match is Rhea Ripley getting her hands on Dominic Mysterio, and that's exactly what we got. But also, I wouldn't have predicted the finish, because again, this one, just like with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, this one felt like, it felt like the end because we got the baby faces winning what's next now don't get me wrong i was happy with the finish just a beautiful finish getting the revenge at this point it seems like they should be happy with what they got but now it's gonna be the judgment day who are bitter about their loss finally gunta versus randy orton randy orton with that 8k camera man again the crowd was absolutely unbelievable it was tough because they didn't really know who to root for randy orton is an absolute legend most of these people grew up watching randy orton including me but it's gunter it's his hometown so i would say the crowd was pretty mixed and i absolutely love this match but i can already tell a lot of people are gonna you know, act like Randy Orton is boring or Gunter is overrated. Because, you see, this was a great match, but it's not necessarily the type of match that will trigger the G spot in the brain of the TikTok era viewer. Yeah, that might be the worst and most cringy thing I've ever said. <laughs> I, for one, loved it. Maybe the referee was a bit too forgiving, but I like how the commentators always pointed out that it's the main event, it's Berlin, the referee's feeling nice today. I like that WWE actually acknowledged that, the commentators, right? A lot of tables spots like Orton's signature right now right and the last couple of minutes of the match were great because Gunter couldn't lift Randy Orton he eventually did we got a kick out of course he locks Randy Orton in and that slapped to the back Randy got away but Gunter still got a hold of him and of course WWE protected Randy Orton Randy didn't tap out he passed out Gunter is still your world heavyweight champion which was expected but like I've said I uh, turned into a dumbass, which I love. I, lo I love, sometimes I just love watching WWE as a casual viewer. I know who should win, I know what's best for the product. Fuck it. Randy. This doesn't have a lot to do with the finish, but it's also concerning how many matches Randy Orton is losing. I get that he is the veteran, he needs to put over younger talent, and that was the right thing to do in this match, especially. I get it. 
I'm just saying it's time to put some respect on Randy Orton's name and he needs to enter a rivalry where he can actually win these matches. And it's crazy because he's been in this position for like five or six years now, if not even more. Even when they do give him the championship, it's like for a month or two. But yes, people, Bash in Berlin absolutely delivered. Next year, if WWE are going to travel uh, to Berlin, I'll probably go, you know, just bless the crowd. The WWE, most importantly, with the presence of big Coco Jumbo vibes. So people, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And also, leave your hot takes. I might do a video. Just write hot take and give me one. Thank you very much. The great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.